wait, stop that. Pumping oh, iron is not the answer. Oh, I'm someone. And to let you know, there's a great product out there that'll build your muscles, make you buff, and you'll fight those kids. Really? What is it? Billie Jean's Muscle Supplement Formula. It's 100% not guaranteed. Cool, let's go get some. All right. So what's that product again? It's Billy Jean's Muscle Supplement Formula. Wow, let me have some. Whoa, 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 one at a time, buddy. Most drunk drivers drive hundreds of times before they're caught. Estimates vary from 250 to 2,000 times. A drunk driving arrest is not a one-time occurrence. Most drunk drivers start drinking in high school. When apprehended and later convicted, few accept that their alcohol abuse is their major problem. Their abuse of alcohol leads them to use poor judgment. When they drink, they don't think. Drunk drivers don't understand the ripple effect of a crash. 911 Center. Yes, I need an ambulance immediately at the corner of Lehigh Station Road and Beckwith Road. There's there's uh, um, ca serious casualties. Send an ambulance right away. Okay, ma'am, relax here a minute. Can you, can you stand the phone? Lehigh Station Road and Beckwith Road right, at this corner. I understand what you're saying. What's going on there? There's, I just witnessed a horrible accident. There's okay, seriously relax. injured in the car. Are, are you involved? No, ma'am. Okay, are you, no, wait a minute. Listen, kid, I, listen to me. Listen, I have, I have to take care of this person, okay? I understand what you're saying, but we need to get the emergency equipment out there first. Is somebody trapped in the vehicle? No, the vehicle okay. is fine, but there's somebody in the driver's seat. I don't think he's... Are they conscious? No. I are think, they breathing? He looks like he's barely breathing. I think the driver's, I think the driver's gone. 911 Center. We have an emergency on Lehigh Station Road. It's... I know. It's west west of uh, west of San Rieta. Okay, sir. Lehigh Station near what street corner? West San Rieta? Uh, uh, west of West San Rieta. Somebody's dead here, and you really need to hurry up. Hi, this is uh, this is Officer Moffer, off to the RPD. We got an accident at the corner of looks like uh, Breckwith and Lehigh Station. We got. Looks like two cars involved. It looks like we have a possible serious trauma. All right, sir, hold on one serious trauma. Hold on one second for me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're going to probably need ALS uh, life support. Need... Looks like uh, serious, serious trauma here. So if you could step that ambulance up, I'd really appreciate it. I'll let him look, know, sir. Yeah, because it looks like the driver's unresponsive and in serious condition, so you might want to just uh, advise yeah, under ambulance. Part... So we, we're looking for the driver of the black vehicle involved in this fatal. Um, his last name is Kemp, K-E-M-P, and we need to know uh, his full information, his address, and all that. Um, his first name is Christian with a K. Okay, and a D-O-B? 8-10-64, brown hair. Yep, that's fine. Christian Kemp started drinking at noon, went back to work, and hit the bars again after he left work. He had graduated from Rush Henrietta High School, started drinking as a teenager, and was arrested for drunk driving while in college. The criminal justice system gave him a second chance, but he continued to drink and drive, killing Rush Henrietta High School junior Matthew Cato, 17, and injuring Sean Elliott, also 17. Witnesses said that the black convertible was traveling at such a high rate of speed that the two young men in the red car never had a chance. Christian told the police, I was going 35 miles an hour. Okay, maybe 45. Officers observed a strong smell of alcohol on his breath and his speech was slurred. On the day of the crash, summer was well underway. Matt and Sean were 17, enjoying life and looking forward to the coming school year. The actions of Christian Kemp took away one man's life and left the other to grieve. When I first found out that Matthew was killed, to be very honest with you, it was so shocking, you were just numb. It was almost just a, a surreal moment. Then you get incredible sadness and, and just depressed. Uh, it's hard to do anything, hard to get out of bed, hard to function, hard to go to work. Uh, 
when we found out later that it was a drunk driver, then that emotion of depression and sadness turns right to anger and frustration because it's such a preventable thing. Drunk driving is a choice, a bad choice, but a choice. And it's only now, almost four years later, that I'm starting to feel like life is somewhat normal. I still think of Matthew every day. Um, but those first couple of years after he died were just horrible. It's difficult to see exactly how, how they felt versus how I thought they felt, but helplessness is not a good feeling. My mother was visibly affected the most. I mean, being an artist by profession at that point, um, her loss of inspiration was huge. That's something that is difficult to recover from. Um, day in and day out, I, w I would think about him, um, about all the things he would never do, things I would never get to see him do. Um, I missed him terribly. He and I used to have great conversations together. Um, my husband and I ended up having to go to marriage counseling. Um, I continue in therapy and uh, I was actually suicidal for a while. Could we find comfort? There, there's a, certainly a level that as husband and wife we can comfort each other, but we also have our own depression and our own frustration. That's why, as Bernie said, we both went to marriage counseling and we also went to individual counseling. So in some cases you're getting you know, help one-on-one -on -one, because there's only so much you can do to help the other person when you're hurting yourself. Matt was not the only Rush Henrietta student that was in the car. Another student, Sean, was riding in the car with Matt, and he was deeply impacted and affected by his experience. He saw his best friend die in front of him. He also came back to school and was living here amongst his peers, having gone through such a, a tremendous uh, experience in his life. Um, Sean was always a very happy, a very um, boisterous, vivacious young man, and in, from my observation, he his his mood and temperament was was deeply impacted by what had happened to him. He became much more introverted, quiet, and into himself. He was deeply affected. There is nothing mistaken about somebody choosing to drive under the influence. Basically, there's a difference, and. When somebody makes a choice to drive under the influence, it's not out of ignorance anymore. 20 years ago, you could claim you were ignorant. Today, we're educated. We know driving under the influence can kill, but people choose to do it anyhow, and we should be using that word when we describe this crime, choice. It's about people's choices. When I found out that Matthew was killed by a drunk driver, I was very angry. Um, I, when I found out that he had um, a prior record of doing this, it totally infuriated me. Especially knowing that this man had a problem in his uh, late teens, early 20s. Uh, he had lost his license before, but it wasn't a part of his, it wasn't something that could be brought up in trial. But knowing that he had had this problem and yet continued, and here he was a 40-year-old man drinking and driving after going to strip bars, it, to me it just seemed like such a waste of his life and of Matthew's life. Totally, something totally avoidable. And to me, it was just insane. It was hard for me to, to fathom how it is that someone could be so irresponsible and really not care about how they affect other people. As a, as a brother, as a son, as a, as a friend, you know, you really watch in a blink of an eye a lot of relationships change for the worse that you have in your life because maybe maybe they don't know what to say, maybe they don't know how to treat you, maybe you're different and that shows, but it's really difficult at that point to to go to go back to the way it quote unquote used to be. It'll never be the way it used to be. Do you feel you got justice with the sentence that the person who killed Matthew got, and he got five years to 15 years? The answer is no. As a victim, as a father of someone who was killed by a drunk driver, you deal with the death, the funeral, you then get involved in the 
criminal trial, you get involved in a civil trial, and then some number of years later, when possibly your life is returning to something about normal, then the parole comes up and you have to go in front of a parole board and beg the parole board not to let this person out any sooner than they absolutely have to. And it just goes on and on and on. But right now, the way it is, they're completely insulated. They sit in jail feeling sorry for themselves, have family and friends feeling bad for them, hoping that they can get them out on bail, waiting for their trial, oh, poor me. But they never get to see the devastation that they've caused. They don't get to see the tears or the grief. It's not real for them in the same way that it's real for the victims. You know, when something like this happens where Matthew was killed by a drunk driver, things that normally gave you pleasure don't anymore. It's hard to find pleasure in life for a long time afterward because nothing matters, nothing's going to bring him back, and it's hard to enjoy yourself. It truly is. Why don't you have yours be blue instead of red? Well, you're going to be in my world. In my world. In my world. <laughs> Matthew Cato.